No contact with my parents for 24 years because they tricked me into giving up my baby. Whipta for refusing to see them before my mother dies? I was 15 when I got pregnant, 16 when I had my baby. Immediately after giving birth my mother had forms for me to sign, telling me they were hospital admin forms. She was my mother, I believed her. They were actually adoption papers. My baby was taken right out of my arms and I didn't see him again for 20 years. The father of my baby and I were still together when I gave birth. His parents were not jumping for joy that we were kids having a baby, yet they were all in to help us. They helped me to get a job as a waitress in my boyfriend's uncle's restaurant. I worked nights and weekends. My boyfriend worked in his dad's auto parts store. Every dollar we made we were saving for the baby. It wasn't much but we were committed to the family we had started. My parents were not so supportive and kicked me out as soon as I told them. They harassed me constantly to get an abortion, then demanded I have the baby adopted. Once my dad attacked my boyfriend on the street and my mother accosted his mother in the middle of the mall. I stopped talking to them for months. Then one day they called and said they had a change of heart, they didn't want to lose me and the baby. I was wary but hopeful. My boyfriend's parents encouraged me to give them a chance. We all regretted it in the end. When I went into labor I was at my parents' house. They took me to the hospital. They told me they couldn't get a hold of my boyfriend or his parents. They promised me they would keep trying until they got someone on the phone. They lied. I left that hospital heartbroken and betrayed. I went to my boyfriend and his parents and we grieved together. Days later my parents had me taken from their home and forced back to their house. I ran away they dragged me back again and again. They finally let me go when I tried to una live myself. I hated them I never wanted to see them again. When I was 22 my boyfriend and I got married. It wasn't a grand event. We were married at the courthouse then went back to my in-laws for a backyard barbecue reception. A year later we welcomed our second child into the world. The trauma from the events of the first time I gave birth hit us both hard, especially my husband. I would not have had it any other way but he still demanded to be in the delivery room with me. I wanted my mill there with us too. His dad and siblings waited on guard in the waiting room and outside the hospital. Overkill. Maybe but we felt safer knowing there were people there for us making sure nothing happened. I have given birth to a total of four babies. We love each and every one of them, and yet our hearts ached and yearned for our firstborn. Every day I thought of him and hoped that he went to a good family that loved him. Every year on his birthday my husband would buy him a matchbox car and I would bake him a rhubarb sponge pudding. We had no idea if he even liked rhubarb sponge pudding and matchbox cars, or if he even knew what they were but we did it anyway. My husband isn't a fan of cake so I imagined our son also wasn't a fan. We would stick a candle in the sponge, sing the song, wish him a long and happy life, and take a photo of us and the kids around his rhubarb sponge pudding. It may seem stupid to some to keep that wound open, but it was how we coped with his loss. Four years ago I was out of town with my oldest daughter at a softball camp when our firstborn showed up at our home. My husband called to tell me to get home immediately. He didn't tell me why but I could hear something in his voice I'd never heard before. Thinking something was wrong I pulled my daughter out of camp and drove home. I can't quite find the words or express how I felt at what happened when we arrived home. Today we are in regular contact with our eldest. We talk off in video calls mostly. We like to see him and he likes to see us when we talk. He games with his younger brothers and annoys the heck out of his sister and they adore him. He was adopted by an older couple that couldn't have kids and was an only child. He loves having siblings. He has spent Christmas with us every year since he came back into our lives and stays for a month. For his birthday we all fly to him and stay for a week. I imagined correctly. He doesn't like cake. He doesn't like rhubarb either so I bake him a peach sponge pudding. We also fly to him on the anniversary week of his parents' deaths. They died within days of each other. His father found us years before when our son first told his parents that one day he would like to meet us. I am so grateful to the man and woman that adopted him. They gave him a good life with lots of love and raised a good son. I wish I could have known them. Thank them. A few weeks ago my dad contacted my in-laws. My mother is dying. They have regrets and want to repair our relationship before she goes. Every part of me is against it. They can both choke to death on their regrets for all I care. There is not one ounce of me even a little bit willing to give them that. I hate them for what they did to us for stealing our son, for taking him right out of my arms. All that time lost because of their cruelty and their selfishness. I hate them. 
My husband has no love for them at all, but he thinks it would be good for me to show them how well we've done. How good our life has been without them. He wants them to meet our kids. All our kids. He wants them to come face to face with the child they took from us. He wants to rub in their faces all they've missed out on and leave them with new regrets. I don't think they deserve to lay their eyes on so much goodness. But I think of my son and the good life he had. The good people that gave him that life. I can't say we would have been able to give him that. Who knows what life a couple of teenaged parents would have been able to provide. Maybe we would have had the life we have if we had kept him. Maybe not. My Phil says probably not. I had always believed that forgiveness was something you offered to others. A gift for those who wronged you. But after years of wrestling with the pain I started to wonder if maybe forgiveness was more about freeing yourself. My parents had taken so much from me, but I didn't want to let them keep taking away my peace. That night as I lay next to my husband, I asked him again what he thought I should do. He squeezed my hand and said, they don't deserve your forgiveness, but maybe you deserve to be free of the hate. A week later I found myself standing outside the hospital room where my mother lay. My hands shook and my heart raced. My children waited outside with their father and my eldest son, the one who was taken from me, was sitting in the car. He had chosen to come but he didn't want to go inside. I respected that. When I walked in my father looked up, his face aged beyond his years, regret heavy in his eyes. My mother, frail and ghost-like, struggled to meet my gaze. She tried to speak but I stopped her. I'm not here to make peace, I said quietly. I'm not here to pretend like everything is okay. What you did. It broke me and I don't know if I can ever fully forgive that. They both remained silent, tears in their eyes. But, I continued, I want you to know that despite what you took from me my life is full. My family is strong. And I didn't need you to find happiness. I stepped closer to my mother. You missed out on so much and that's something you'll have to live with for however long you have left. I didn't stay long. I left them with the weight of their regrets as heavy as they had left me with mine. As I walked out of the hospital the fresh air felt lighter as if a part of me had let go. My son stepped out of the car and gave me a small smile. I knew then that even though I couldn't rewrite the past, I had reclaimed my future. And as for my parents, they would have to face the end with the knowledge that I had thrived without them. I had created the life they never believed I could. And that, I realized, was the closure I truly needed. Ata for suggesting to my husband I would want a divorce if he doesn't want kids. My husband and I have been together for six years now and married for two. At a certain age we both agreed we would start trying to have a baby. Now with the time approaching, whenever I mention the thought of a baby his comments are always negative. Like our freedom is over, we'll have a financial burden, you diapers. At this point he's ruining my excitement and happiness of having a child together. I don't want him to feel as if it is a chore and to be unhappy about it. On the other hand, I don't want a kid with someone who isn't ready or coming in with a negative headspace. It feels like just yesterday that Jason and I were talking about our future. We dreamed about everything, our home, traveling, kids. I was so sure we were always on the same page, that we understood each other without words. But now, I barely recognize him. Every time I bring up having a baby, Jason turns into someone else. His comments are always negative, kids are expensive, we'll lose our freedom, ugh, diapers. Every time he says this, I feel something inside me break. I've always dreamed of being a mom, dreamed of little feet running around our apartment. But now, it all feels out of reach, like it's a burden to him. Last night, after yet another conversation about how kids change everything, I couldn't hold back anymore. Jason, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Do you even want kids? Or is this just my dream? He looked at me for what felt like forever, like he was searching for an answer. I don't know, he finally said. I thought I did. But now, I'm not sure it's right for us. Those words hit me like a punch to the chest. I always thought we were in this together, that our dreams were shared. But suddenly, I realized we might not be walking in the same direction anymore. I can't do this, I said, barely holding back tears. I can't give up on what I've always wanted. But I also don't want to force you into something you're not ready for. If you really don't want kids, I don't know what that means for us. You're saying you'd leave me over this? 
He looked at me like he couldn't believe what I was saying. I don't want to leave. I could barely get the words out. But if we can't agree on something this big, if you can't be with me on this, maybe it's better if we part ways. We didn't say much after that, and the days dragged on, filled with an unbearable silence. Eventually, we made a choice. We broke up. My world fell apart. I was alone, without him, and without the family I'd always dreamed of. After we split up, I threw myself into work and tried to distract myself. But soon, something unexpected happened. I'd been feeling nauseous for weeks, so I decided to take a pregnancy test, just to rule it out. Two lines. I was pregnant. Shock, joy, fear. They all hit me at once. How was this even possible? How do I tell Jason? I was filled with doubts, but I knew I couldn't keep this from him. We had to talk. I pulled myself together and called him. He sounded just as shocked as I was when I told him the news. But his reaction wasn't what I expected. We need to meet, he said. When we met, I could tell he was nervous, but he didn't shy away from the conversation. We talked for a long time, and for the first time, he opened up about his real fears. He was scared he wouldn't be a good dad, scared of the responsibility. But now that it was real, he realized he wasn't afraid of having a kid. He was afraid of losing me. We decided to give our relationship another shot. And though I was worried that Jason wouldn't change, everything felt different this time. He started getting involved in everything. Reading parenting books, coming to doctor's appointments with me, and being there for me every step of the way. When our baby was born, Jason was right there. And he turned out to be an amazing dad. I watched him laugh while changing diapers and calm our baby down when he was fussy. I saw the light in his eyes when our son took his first steps. And I realized then that all of our fears and doubts were just part of the journey we had to go through together. Our love had won. We were back together, this time as a family. And even though the road was tough, I knew now that it was all worth it. At EA for not wanting to keep the secret that my daughter isn't my biological child for my family anymore? Hi, I'm 36 years old. I've been with my wife since we were 19, and we've been married for 12 years now. We have two daughters, our oldest is six, and the youngest is four, and we're trying for a third child. The thing is, my older daughter isn't biologically mine, even though she's 100% my daughter in my eyes. I don't want to get into all the details, but a few years after we got married, my wife was raped. The guy is in prison now. My wife is a very private person, and while her parents know what happened, she's never told anyone in my family. Not long after the attack, my wife got pregnant, and we weren't sure if the baby was mine. We did a prenatal paternity test before our daughter was born, and it confirmed she wasn't biologically mine. But I told my wife I'd love the child and raise her as my own. We agreed to keep this between us. Even her parents don't know the full truth, though they probably suspect it. Obviously, we plan to tell our daughter when she's older. But for now, she thinks I'm her biological father. The fact that I'm not her biological father has never been an issue for me. I've been there for my older daughter her whole life, and I love her more than anything. The issue is that as she's growing up, it's becoming more and more obvious that she doesn't look like me or our younger daughter. I come from a Portuguese family, and both I and my younger daughter have olive skin and dark, curly hair. My older daughter has blonde hair and blue eyes, like my wife. My parents always loved my wife, but over the past few years, I've noticed a shift. My mom doesn't make as much effort to spend time with her like she does with my brother's wives. Her attitude is polite but distant, which wasn't the case before. A few weeks ago, I went out for coffee with my mom, and she kept making comments about my older daughter's blue eyes and fair skin. She didn't flat out ask if she's mine, but it felt like she was implying it. The only thing I could think to say at the time was that she looks like her mother. That conversation has been bothering me. I'm worried my parents think my wife cheated on me, and that's affecting how they see her. I don't want anyone in my family assuming the worst about her because she hasn't done anything wrong, and she's an amazing wife and mother. 
Last night, I talked to my wife about the conversation with my mom. I explained that our daughter looks nothing like me, and it's becoming more obvious. I asked if she'd consider telling my parents the truth so they don't think she cheated on me. My wife teared up and said it wasn't their business and that she doesn't want anyone to know, especially if it means they might treat our daughter differently. I told her my parents would be heartbroken for her, but they would never treat a little girl I love so much any differently because of something she had no control over. I also said it's pretty obvious to anyone with eyes that she's not mine, and it would be better to be honest than to act like we have something to hide. I told my wife that I'd ultimately respect her decision, but I really don't want to keep this secret anymore, and it's stressing me out. She's been upset for the past few days, and I'm not sure what the right thing to do is. On the one hand, I understand her need to protect herself and our daughter. But on the other hand, I can't stand the idea that my family might think she's been unfaithful when she went through something so traumatic. The next few weeks were emotionally exhausting for me. I could see my wife struggling to recover from our conversation. She became more withdrawn, barely speaking to my parents, and even during family holidays, she was distant. The tension between her and my family was growing, and at some point, I realized I couldn't stay quiet any longer. I gathered the whole family, my parents, my brother and his family, my wife, and our kids. It wasn't as easy as I imagined. My heart was pounding, but I knew there had to be a moment when we faced the truth head on. At first, my wife nervously held my hand, her eyes pleading with me not to go through with it. But I couldn't stay silent anymore. I need to tell you something, I began. I know things have been different these past few years. I feel like especially you, Mom, have been treating my wife differently. I've noticed it, and it hurts, but we need to be honest with each other. I can't let you think something about my wife that isn't true. I looked at my wife, and she nodded, though tears were welling up in her eyes. Six years ago, my wife was assaulted. I continued, watching the shock spread across my parents' faces. It was the hardest thing we've ever been through, and I was there with her. So when we found out that our older daughter wasn't biologically mine, I still chose to be her father because I love her. And nothing will ever change that. My mom started crying. All this time, she thought my wife had cheated and I'd just been covering it up. Why didn't you tell us sooner? My mom whispered. Because it wasn't your business. I said, a bit harsher than I intended. But now that you know the truth, I hope you can start treating my wife with the love and respect she deserves. It was a tough moment, but it felt like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. My family hugged us, and while the road to healing wasn't instant, we were all taking steps in the right direction. Over time, my wife came to realize that the truth couldn't be hidden forever, and being honest with the people who truly love and support us was the right choice in the end. 